Hello, welcome to the Linear Algebra Tutor. Here we're going to wrap up our discussion with determinants and all of that stuff we've been talking about by concluding with a few important properties. If you look through any linear algebra book on determinants and get through all this stuff that we've been talking about, you're going to find pages and pages of properties with determinants. So there's just lots of stuff that people have figured out about determinants that, that are useful, nice relations, especially for a math book to tabulate for you. I'm not going to present every relation of a determinant, but I'm going to present the ones that are, uh, I think, important. Some are more important than others, but all of the ones on this list, on, on these lists, I think are worth bringing up for a good reason. So don't expect to see everything in here. Your book probably has some others, but I'm going to share with you the ones that I think are most important. Okay, so remember when we calculate determinants with cofactor expansion. Cofactor expansion. All right. Um, the first property I'm going to share with you is something that's pretty obvious, but maybe not the first time you think about it. If any row or column of a matrix is all zeros, then the determinant is also equal to zero. If I write it like this, if any row or column is all zeros and the determinant is equal to zero, you might file it away and say, okay, great but you may not think much about it, like why? Well, let me show you real quick. Just give you a quick little thing and you, then you'll probably remember it. What if you have something like one, two, three, zero, 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 four, five, six. This is our matrix and we want to find the determinant of this matrix. Let's say, or let's recall that we can calculate the determinant by expanding about any row or any column. So I can go through this row, through this row, through this row, through this column, this column, this column. And you should get the same answer in all cases. So if we expand about the middle row, what we'll have is this zero times the cofactor at this location, plus this times the cofactor at that location, plus this times the cofactor of that location. That is the definition of expanding cofactor expansion to find the determinant. We've been doing that before. So if you ever see zeros in any column or any row, you could always expand the determinant about that column in that row. And so because of that, you don't even have to calculate anything. You can always see that the determinant is equal to zero. This is matrix A. It's useful to me because sometimes you spend a lot of time, like if you don't notice that, then you might start expanding the determinant about the first row, and then you wouldn't even realize it until the very end that it all happens to become zero. So kind of keep that in mind. Number two is pretty cool. If any two rows or columns are proportional to each other, each other, then the determinant is also equal to zero. Again, this is 